Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Probably every weekend. <laughs> Just like I am right now. <laughs> Walk faster. <laughs> so I also attended the Evelyn Davis Project meeting. <clears throat> this is for an update on the Save-A-Lot. The Save-A-Lot is a low-cost, um, inexpensive grocery chain that's based out of St. Uh, not St. Louis, but out of Missouri. And there's an article that I'm going to read later on the show that also uh, speaks on what Save a Lot and stores are at Walmart and all that you're doing in response to the recession. Okay, so the Evelyn Davis Project involves the grocery store or retail division as a planned workforce center at Aethan University. And in my view, it's a kind of the blending of social services and retail in the vein of Goodwill. Salvation Army, St. Vincent de Paul, although there may be exploration of a co-op business model, and that's according to Ray Brown, who's heading the project, there's going to be a final, they're waiting for a final bond approval by the Iowa Finance Authority, and that's going to be scheduled for Thursday, March 2nd, and I believe the public is invited, it's an open hearing, and so... Um, you can go in and show your support on March 2nd. Uh, Ray Brown will also present this project before the City Council on Monday, March 7th. <clears throat> and so there's also been an invitation extended to the public to show support for that project. Construction will begin on that, or uh, remodeling and build-out will begin when the bonds are released. And so that's what, what they're waiting on. But anyway, there was mention uh, informally of a, a sort of stigma of a grocery store in this area uh, of town. There is uncertainty of return on investment. There's also mention of when, not if, Harding Hills High V closes and relocates to Beaver and Douglas, that will leave a further void uh, in the community, uh, a void of a grocery store. I call that void myself a food desert. I've spoken about that several times on the show and even um, dedicated an entire episode to the food desert. The north central uh, region of Des Moines is consistently and persistently underserved by inadequate access to public transportation, um, access to libraries, uh, grocery stores, and retail economic development. And that's very unfortunate because it's not a type of sustainable growth model for the city. And you can't really contain that problem in one section of the city um, as a central part of the city goes, so does the rest of the city. It's not something that you can isolate. And so a rising tide does lift all boats, and I think we do need to do the right thing and lift all the boats. Uh, that's my recommendation. But anyway, the Evelyn Davis Project will meet on the third Tuesdays for the next six months at 5.30 p.m. And the public is welcome to uh, visit and contribute. All right, we're going to go to your Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you again, Mrs. Branstead. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Say hi to Marcus. Oh, yeah. Say hi to Marcus. Go to the elevator. Back up. Renewable Fuel Summit was another one of my stops. Uh, it was heavily covered by the Des Moines Register. I won't go into the minute-by-minute uh, -minute details of my visit there, but I will say that um, there were um, a lot of heavy hitters, which um, resulted in heavy media coverage, including um, Governor um, Terry Branstad, uh, Rick Santorum, and then Newt Gingrich, and then people um, in the director's seat of several um, biofuels uh, industries were there, and lots of speakers and lots of exhibitors too. At the end of the summit, the organizers did play a pretty sharp video on the big screen, and it featured John Stewart of The Daily Show. And so Stewart presented a montage of presidents, including Richard Nixon, Jimmy Carter, uh, the first George Bush, Bill Clinton, the second George Bush, and then Barack Obama, 
all of them pontificating on clean energy um, and then even moving the goalpost um, further and further away. Uh, it was kind of funny and sad to see so many of them talk about we need clean energy and then um, look around and see what progress has been made and hasn't been made. Um, so it was funny, sad, but then it was, you know, also funny again. Um, but it does seem, you know, from my understanding of the overall um, uh, view of the show, that the biofuel industry is very much aware that oil, gas, nuclear, and coal are going to actively fight them every step of the way uh, for market share. Um, and so um, that's what we're going to be seeing in our papers. That's what we're going to be seeing on our talk shows. All very intriguing. <laughs> Are you with the Democratic Party? Yes. <laughs> they sent trackers earlier today, so that's why. Yeah. Are you? Are you from the Democrat Party? Are you from the Democrat Party? I'm just standing here. Who are you? What? Who are you with? I'm with Luther Infusion. With who? I'll give you my card. Okay, great. Who are you? What's that? Who are you? Oh, weren't you inside? Nope. She oh. stood at the doorway and filmed Oh, oh I see. It's okay. pretty smart. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're not on the Democrat Party? Yeah. With the Democrat Party at all? I'm with them. But are you with, are you with the Democrat Party? I'm, I'm a party of one. And which one? <laughs> I'm a party of one. That's, that's my affiliation. 